que va a ser exactamente sobre Introduction from the Sea. So, Introduction from the Sea uh, is, a, is, a, is a very special part of, of CITES provision, according to CITES, and it's very peculiar to the CITES convention, because according to CITES, uh, there are basically three kinds of trades, export, import, and introduction from the sea. So it's, it's, uh, it's a kind of very, very specific provision of sites, which we'll talk about now. Yeah, okay, uh, very quickly, I'm not going to go over that because Juan Carlos have just done that uh, on, on we, we are going to, to briefly talk about sites, but extremely quickly, because that has just been covered. Then we will explain the introduction from the sea, including the resolution that has been recently uh, adopted uh, in COP16. Uh, talk quickly also about the permits and certification related to that, which is uh, included in resolution 12.13, also uh, Rev COP16. And uh, the introduction from the sea related decisions, including chartering and capacity building. That's what we are going to cover in this presentation. I'm not going to talk about that. We have just seen the origins of CITES and the importance of it. But I think Im an important thing to highlight is that the, the introduction from the sea was included there from the beginning in 1973. Uh, and it took until this year so that the parties could come to an agreement on what exactly the introduction from the sea meant and how to implement this provision. So it was a very, very long way to go which included uh, almost 10 years of, of uh, work done by, by a working group uh, to come to a common understanding what was the introduction from the sea. Before I go into that very quickly here, the great advantage on how sites works is that it, as it has been shown, established a common procedural mechanism to uh, all parties including similar rules and regulation requirements, authorities, procedures, and documents. And that was exactly the problem about the introduction from the sea, because uh, it, was not, uh, well, it was not clear what exactly the procedures were. Each party was applying the introduction from the sea on its own understanding. So it was very urgent uh, that we could come to a common understanding what to do. We have already seen all the shark uh, uh, members, which is a, it's a very global in, in its nature. Only few countries are not parties of CITES. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> okay. <coughs> Sorry. And finally, coming directly to introduction from the sea, it is included in Article 1 in the definitions of trade, as I said, we, you, you may have export, import, and introduction from the sea. It's included in Articles 3, 4, and 4, uh, which relates to regulation of, of trade in Appendix 1 specimens and regulation of trade in Appendix 2 specimens. And thank you very much. And also <coughs> in Article 14, uh, which relates to the fact on domestic legislation and international conventions. So, so that you can understand, uh, when we started to, to work uh, in, in, in a renewed uh, working group three years ago, there was a big stalemate. The discussion on introduction from the sea uh, was pretty much, uh, there was a big divide between half of the parties that would have the understanding that uh, the state of introduction should be the port state and the other half of the parties had the understanding that the, in, the state of introduction should be the flag state of the vessel. So basically, if, if a specimen is caught in, inside the national, in, in, in the waters of national jurisdiction, there is not a problem whose fish is this. But if a fish comes from the high seas, so in the high seas there is no national jurisdiction, and if this fish is taken to a given state, uh, who is the state of introduction? Is the state where the fish is being landed or is the state that flags the vessel that brought the fish? So that was the discussion and we couldn't move an inch from there. Then we decided to entirely change this approach. I, I remember very, very well the first time we talked about that with Laura in, in, in US when we presented this new idea. And we said, well, let's drop this discussion on port state versus flag state, because this discussion was very much contaminated with a lot of political issues related to that 
flag state, port state discussion uh, coming from the fishers world that was making any progress in the context of site is impossible. So we said, well, let's forget port state, flag state, and let's discuss if there is only one state involved in the process or if there are two states involved in the process. So we came to the conclusion in the end, making a long story very short, that if a fish is taken in the high seas and it is brought to the same state that flags the vessel, then there is only one state involved in the process. In this case, therefore, there should be no doubt that this is an introduction from the sea, and of course, the state of introduction is both the flag state and the port state, because they are the same. But if a fish is taken in the high seas and it's taken to another state, then there are two states involved. There is the flag state, and there is the state which receives the fish. And therefore, we came to the conclusion that this is not introduction from the sea, because you have two states, then we should consider that as a simple export-import operation. So by following this uh, new uh, uh, way of looking at the problem, the problem dissolved itself. And on that ground, we were able to come to a conclusion on a very, very long discussion that, as I said, had been going on in sight world since the the, the foundation of, of, of the convention. So, uh, what we have now, uh, and I have that resolution here, if anyone needs a copy, resolution conf 14.6 uh, rev cop 16 is that introduction from the sea means transportation into a state of specimens of any species which were taken in the marine environment not under the jurisdiction of any state. And the marine environment not under the jurisdiction of any state means those marine areas beyond the areas subject to the sovereignty or sovereign rights of a state consistent with uh, the international law as reflected in UNCLOS. Uh, another important thing also is that after working on that and after having changed the approach to the problem, it became very clear to those who were discussing that that introduction from the sea was envisaged by the, f the founders of, of the convention as a way to cover those species that are caught in, in, in an area which is not under the jurisdiction of any state. So if this, f this fish specimen is, is bring into that state, we, how, how we would address that? Because it was not coming from its territory. It was coming from international water. So they included that introduction from the sea with this view, and later on it got confused because of the issue between port and flag state, which was solved by the understanding that if we have two, two states involved, then it's an export, as a matter of fact, and it's not introduction from the sea. Uh, so here it continues to say, recognizing the need of a common understanding of the provisions of the convention relating to specimens taken in the marine environment in order to facilitate the standard implementation of trade controls, as I said, every party was doing its own way. Mm and to improve, consequently, the accuracy of site straight data, the conference of the parties has agreed that whenever any specimen of a species, including Appendix 1 or 2, is taken in the marine environment not under the jurisdiction of any state by a vessel registered in one state and is transported into that same state, then the provisions related to introduction from the sea applies. Meaning, in this case, it's an introduction from the sea. But if, and that's the situation here, Whenever any specimen of a species, included in Appendix 1 or 2, is taken in the marine environment not under the jurisdiction of any state in the high seas, by a vessel registered in one state and is transported into a different state, then it's not an introduction from the sea, it's an export-import operation. It seems extremely simple, in fact, but it took 30, 40 years to come to that conclusion, believe it or not. But uh, that's, that's how it was. Anyway. Uh, so, in addition to that, the COP has also agreed on guidance for determining the state of introduction and the state of, of export in the case of chartering operation. This was one of the most difficult situations that we had to deal with, because suppose that uh, country A uh, charters a vessel to country B, okay? So, like Brazil, let's say. Brazil charters a vessel from country A. So this vessel is being chartered by a Brazilian fishing company. So 
this vessel is authorized to fish both inside Brazilian Economic Exclusive Zone and also in the high seas. When the chartered vessel is operating inside the Brazilian Economic Exclusive Zone, Brazil is the country who has jurisdiction over these fishing operations. And of course, over the fish that is caught, because it's caught inside the economic exclusive zone of Brazil. But when these operations happen in the high seas, Brazil has no jurisdiction over the vessel, because in the high seas is only the flag state who has jurisdiction over the fishing vessels operating in the high seas. Then how it would work, and that was uh, uh, the most complicated uh, part of, of the process, but we came uh, also to a rather simple conclusion that depending on agreement between both the chartering vessel, I mean the flag state, and, and the chartering state, which is the port state, pending agreement on them, but between them, of course, uh, if the fish is brought to the, the chartering state, then it could be an introduction from the sea, and if it's taken to another state, it could be an export, and the, the, the chartering state could be the, the exporting state, but only if the flag state agrees. So basically we said, both states have to come to an agreement on how to do it. And that was the way to solve the problem. So the way it's drafted now is that, oh, sorry. Uh, this guidance apply under the conditions, well, there, there were some conditions we set. I mean, these chartering arrangements could not be just any chartering. They should uh, be done in, the operation should be under a written agreement between the state where the vessel is registered and the chartering state, consistent with the framework on a chartering operation of a relevant RFMO, that was uh, one of the big difficulties we had uh, because to some parties, this condition that the chartering arrangement has to be done in the context of the legal regime of original fishers management organization so that these conditions can apply. If, if, if it's not done under an RFMO, the conditions set in sites do not apply. Uh, then the site secretariat ha has also been informed of this arrangement in advance of its int into effect, and that site secretariat makes this arrangement available to all parties and to any relevant RFMO. So it's very transparent. Everybody knows that the agreement, uh, the chartering agreement is going on, and who is doing that, and who is doing what. So uh, on that basis, the COP has recommended that the state of introduction, state of export, or state of import in satisfying itself that the provision of the condition have been met, take into account whether or not the specimen or was or will be acquired in landed. That's another sp aspect which is extremely important and, and has been just mentioned by Juan Carlos that this, this, was one, this was new, a, a new provision that has been established for the introduction from the sea is the condition that the fish was taken in a manner consistent with applicable measures under international law for the conservation and management of living marine resources, including those of any other treaty, convention, or agreement with conservation and management measures for the marine species in question, and through any legal, unreported, or unregulated fishing activities. So that means that in doing, we introduced the, the concept of legal acquisition in relation with regard to introduction from the sea, which was not previously there. And I think that's very important. So we created a new code, a code X, to be used to indicate when the specimens are taken from the marine environment, not under the jurisdiction of any state. And specifically in the case of chartering, the Secretariat uh, shall report to the Site Sustaining Committee on the implementation of the Convention in relation to the provision of chartering, and the report should focus on the conditions under which non detriment findings are made and permits and certificates are issued, issued and assess the capacity of chartering states and states in which the vessels are registered to control uh, compliance with the provisions of Site's Conventions. Uh, and there was also a clause that the provisions of chartering provided for in resolution should be reviewed by in, in, in the, during the next COP16. There was also a clause on capacity building and a special requirement of, of developing states demanding the Secretariat to develop capacity building tools and materials for use by parties related to the implementation of the Convention for Specimens taken from the marine environment not under the jurisdiction of any state. So there should be a capacity building effort related to how to implement the introduction from the sea provision insights. 
And I think that's it. And uh, it's important to note that uh, CITES and FAO, they are working together for legal, sustainable, and traceable international trading sharks and month rays. And that has been, as also has been said by the previous speaker, supported by funds from the European Union. And I think that all I had to say about the introduction from the sea, and it was rather quick to show, but it took, as I said, more than three decades to come to that very simple conclusion, amazingly. Thank you very much.